In this video, we're going to examine the consequences of when we use the Gaussian elimination method or the row echelon form technique uh, with underdetermined systems. And underdetermined systems are these situations where there are more variables than there are equations. Here we have three different variables to solve for x1, x2, and x3, and only two different equations. Can you even get a valid answer? Well, let's just check this out real quick. We we'll suspect that we probably can't, but we can find out quick enough by setting up the augmented matrix. Here it would be 1, 2, 2, 4, 1, 2, minus 1, 3. And now we want to make this 0. And clearly if this was added to negative 2, it would be 0. So you imagine multiplying this row by negative 2. We don't actually do it. We just imagine the operation being performed. So this is multiplied by negative 2 and added to this row. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 4, that's 0. Negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. And here we have 3. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 3 or negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. And going no further, we have something that's nonsensical. We have, z from this row here, 0 x1 plus 0 times x2 plus 0 times x3 equals 5. So we have 0 equals 5. Of course, that can't happen. So this is undetermined. Obviously, this has no solution. But as we saw with overdetermined systems, um, there can be situations where indeed you can have solutions. And the same situation occurs with underdetermined systems, only it happens in a much more interesting context. I want to try and demonstrate with an example. So suppose we had these equations. Suppose we had x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 equals 2. So we have five different unknowns. And then the next equation we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 2 times x4 plus 2 times x5 equals 3. And the next equation, our last one, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 2 times x4 plus 3 times x5 equals 2. So we have five different unknowns and only three equations. Is it possible this could have a solution? So let's just quickly get an augmented matrix form, try and grind the numbers and see what happens. So we have 1, 1, 1. Here we have 1, 1, 1. Same here. Here we have 1, 2, 2. Here we have 1, 2, 3. Make a vertical line. Include these numbers. 2, 3, 2. There's our augmented matrix. OK, now what we want to do is make this 0 and make 
this zero. So in each case, we're multiplying the first row by negative one, and then adding it to the second row, and then adding it to the third row. So let's see what happens. Of course, these numbers stay unchanged. Okay, and we add negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0, 0. So we have three zeros. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And this is 1. And we have negative 2 plus 3 is 1. What about here? Obviously, these three will be zero. And then we have negative one plus two, that's one. And here we have negative one plus three, that's two. Negative one times two is negative two plus two is zero. So we have this. And let's see, what can we do here? Um, we probably could almost quit if we wanted to at this point. But let's see, what we can do is we could make this zero here underneath this one. There's no point in doing it for these. These are already zero, but we can make this zero by multiplying this by negative 1 and adding it to this row. So let's just write things down. We'll have this row stays unchanged. This row stays unchanged. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And of course, these three zeros are going to stay unchanged. We're going to multiply this by negative 1 and add it to this row. But 0 plus 0 is 0. So that doesn't change. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. And we can stop right there. Did we keep things in focus? Not very well, did we? OK. What we did was multiply this by negative 1 and add to this row. So that becomes 0. That becomes 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. It gives us this row. OK. We can stop right here. Now, let's look at what we have. This is where we get into the concept of lead variables and free variables. What we do is we look at the rows. We have three different rows here, two, three. And in each of the rows, we look and ask ourselves, what is the first non-zero variable? So here, obviously, it's x1. Next row, x1, 0, x2, 0, x3, 0, x4 corresponds to a non-zero number. The third row, x5 corresponds to a non-zero number. So x4, x5, and x1, these are the lead variables. Now, what variables are left over that we had? x2, and x3. Again, try to keep things in focus. These are the lead variables. These are the free variables.
what we do is we're going to express the lead variables in terms of the free variables. So to see what we're talking about, let's go along and go here step by step. Here we go along and we see, well, x5, that is equal to negative 1. So determine, we have determined what x5 is. Now we go to this row, and here we have x4 plus x5 equals 1. So we have x4 plus x5, that's minus 1. So you have x4 minus 1 equals 1. So x4 has to equal 2. Now we go to the first row. And here's where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Look at what we have. We have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, which is 2. plus x5, which is minus 1, equals 2. So what we have then is 2 minus 1 is 1. Bring that over to here, and that's going to equal 1. So we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 1. These x2 and x3 are the free variables. They're called free variables because they can assume any value. So x1 equals 1 minus x2 minus x3. So when we solve the system, we find a specific number for x5. We find a specific number for x4. But we don't find a specific number for x1. It's expressed in terms of these free variables, x2 and x3. And these can take on any value whatsoever, the x2 and the x3. And therefore, the x1 can also assume any value, depending, of course, on what we chose for x2 and x3. So what this tells us is that, yes, there's a solution to this equation, but it is not a unique solution. The solution has an infinite number of possibilities because of these free variables. Again, x5 had a specific number, x4 came out to be a specific number, but there are no specific numbers for x2 and x3. Those are free variables, and x1 is dependent upon x2 and x3 upon these free variables. So there's no unique solution for these set of equations. And usually when you have these underdetermined systems like this, well, first of all, you can never have a unique solution to them. So that means they're either going to have no solution, as we saw at the first example, or they're going to have an infinite number of solutions because of the free variables. And exactly now, how do these free variables come into play? What we do is we, we went through here trying to make these zeros once we did that, though, we automatically started having 0 in the other diagonal element. So we knew we weren't going to get a perfect triang upper triangular um, matrix when we finished. What we had is a matrix in this form right here. Well, then what we do is we look at it and we ask ourselves, OK, if we go across to the different rows, what variables correspond 
to non-zero numbers. x1, x4, and x5. Those are the lead variables. The variables that are left over, the x2 and the x3, those are the free variables and they can take on any value whatsoever. That's why they're called free variables. And what's going to happen is somewhere along the way, either one or all of these lead variables are going to be expressed in terms of the free variables. In this case, x4 and x5 had unique numbers, but x1 did not. In other situations, it might be all the lead variables are expressed in terms of the free variables. Whichever way it happens, you're going to have an infinite number of solutions. And when we have these underdetermined systems here, where well, the number of rows that we have on our matrix, that corresponds to the number of equations, but the number of equations are less than the number of the variables, or that means then that we set up the augmented matrix the number of rows is going to be less than the number of columns. So when we work along with the augmented matrix and we use our Gaussian elimination or our row echelon form technique, even if all of the rows give us a lead variable like it did in this problem, because there's more columns than there are rows, there's always going to be some free variables left over, and those free variables can take on any value. That's why they call it a free variable. So therefore, for underdetermined systems, you're either going to have an infinite number of solutions, or if you saw in the previous example here that we did a few minutes ago, either that or there's no solution whatsoever. But for our underdetermined systems, there is never, ever any unique solution for them. Also, again, we wanted to hit hard on this concept of lead variables and free variables because we're going to use it continuously when we start to uh, study other properties of matrices um, in the future videos here. So anyway, that's it for this video. And as you can see, how underdetermined systems react, we're trying to apply the Gaussian elimination technique or the row echelon form technique, it's entirely different than when we have overdetermined systems. Okay, that's it for this um, video. Come back, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.